So we're going to give you three years in the past, and we want you to give us an important memory from each. So the first year is 2005. Um, 2005, I was a junior in junior. I graduated in 06 from high school, so I was either a junior or a senior in high school. Um, yeah, uh, really um, a specific memory. You want to know one specific memory, or you want to know like generally what I was doing back then? Something that Gen tells us about, about you. About, yeah, so like, in two, it's funny because like being an NR now, that was in that era of my life, that was one of the most like, uh, uh I feel like the first job that led towards this trajectory in my life. Um, I interned for this uh, party company and worked for them called 212 Enterprises. If people are from LA, uh, may know about it. You probably gotta be a little older, like my age. I know y'all college students. But um, uh, in like 2004, 2006, uh, in that time, time, time frame, there was this uh, 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 promotion, uh, this club, like all ages club, and I worked for them. And it kind of, Got me really like uh, I, I was I was raised in L.A. and like mid city, but my last two years of high school I went to in the valley, so I knew people all throughout L.A. like from Inglewood all the way up to the valley. So it was and then from basketball like damn near Long Beach, and you know, so I could promote to everyone. So yeah, yeah it was a uh, um, it was like my 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 entry into like entertainment y stuff and meeting people and meeting artists and being around that type of lifestyle. And it's funny because a lot of those people I work with, that group of people I work with now, they're um, Nas's managers. Um, mm -hmm. Anthony Soleil, he manages Nas now. We all intern together. Um, one of the other girls, uh, um, Leslie Rosales, she works in marketing at Def Jam now. And it's just funny to see like all these various people, all these various people now in life doing their own things, uh, uh, still in music or still in, wow. yeah, in their own various capacities. That was us at 15, intern and throwing parties. Okay, how about 2010? 2010, I was, uh, that was after my first year interning at Def Jam. Um, yeah, uh, uh, I was interning at Def Jam, interning and temping at Def Jam, uh, uh, transitioning to Scouting at Columbia. And um, yeah, I was just a college student at LMU. Um, um, I think I was at LMU at that point. Mm, I was either LMU or CSUN. I was one of the two, LMU or CSUN. But yeah, man, I was just like going to the spliff out here in LA. Um, that was like a, a every Friday. That was when, at that point, I was, yeah, like all the way, um, balls waist deep, whatever you want to call it, in, 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 in the music industry. And uh, 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 not making any real money yet, um, but uh, 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 probably only a couple really hundred dollars or something at that point. But um, yeah, just a, a scouting artist and stuff like that. And, and bringing them to the labels a little bit I could, and and uh, having a good time in college, graduating from school um, um, shortly after. So yeah, yeah, that was that was 2010 for me. Laying the foundation, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the last year, 2015. 2015. 2015. I was uh, I had just became vice president of A and R Dev Jam. Um, no idea promoted me. And uh, yeah, no, it was like probably the beginning of me really realizing that things were working out. <laughs> and uh, Janae and Logic were doing really well. Um, and yeah, I think and that was 2015. I had just begun, yeah, trying to buy my first house. Yeah, yeah so that's when I just, like, just had saved up the money. It was like, I felt like I'd become a, 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 a real adult. So yeah, yeah that, that, was, mm -hmm. uh, that was a good time getting into real estate and uh, career settling in and stuff like that. Yeah, that was 2015. Now I'll, I'll, I'll go with a little deeper question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's always out there, people saying like, follow your passion and make sure that your work is your passion. If you do that, it's not gonna feel like work. But um, the main problem there is usually people don't know what their passion is. Mm -hmm. What's your suggestion on people like exploring and uh, finding what their passion is? I know what their passion is. Um, I feel like uh, um, you kind of, like, I know I, I reference back to this a lot, but, you know, the older you get, the more and more you realize how to be honest with yourself. And, uh, like, uh, uh, like, like I said, like, I don't want to keep being a, a record player, but it's like, it's like, like I made the list of five things. I think those were my passions. You know what I mean? I think uh, 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 I probably had like a little baby panic attack and like thinking that I was going to have to really get a career in political science. 
And that led me to like being honest with myself about what my passions were. But I think everyone, I think everyone knows what their passions are. You know, um, I think for some people they're a little harder to exploit. You know, um, I think I think me and my fiance had that conversation a lot, and um, I think it's a little easier for me to find my passions. Where for her, you know, she um, 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 they're not as clearly defined. Um, um, but you know, she still she she find I would I would argue that she finds happiness in life way easier than I do. So you know, I wouldn't. That's where like I wouldn't even antiquate that to being happiness or anything like that. But uh, uh, your passion is just like I feel like just trying to trying to find things that 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 you that you know it's it's hard because trying to find ways to monetize your passion. You know what I mean? That, that's not always possible. I mean, it's hard to really just say like, hey. Whatever you're passionate about, you could, but you know, I think you should you should really keep your passion sacred, um, and if you can figure out, because your passions, I think, are what keep you sane more than what keep you afloat, and um, keep those passions sacred. And if you're lucky enough to figure out a way to monetize them and a way to 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 to, to do that, I think you're precious with that, and um, 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 and you're lucky, and uh, 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 I think it is possible, but um, I think that just comes with um, a little bit of uh, a wisdom, and, and 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 I don't think I don't think it's as easy as like, you know, like just uh, if, if I could say, then I'd be mad that I'm not playing basketball now, or you know what I mean, or or you know, you can't be mad if your first passion doesn't work out, you know, like. But I think it's just finding things that inspire you and continuing to be inspired. You know what I mean? There's always whatever you're on a wormhole in the middle of the night on YouTube trying to <laughs> get more information on, or you know what I mean, or or or. Whatever the the, the the twenty influencers you follow, I don't know what that means in your life. That's some element of that lifestyle or that life or that. It's not just you know what I mean, like beyond just like traveling pictures. You know, like I I don't want to liken it to Instagram too much, but like the things you got to find. What about that? That you know what what you can liken to your own life. What whether it's the exact thing that they're doing or the ways that they're doing it. I think a lot of times people confuse like you know um, like with Matt basketball or with music or a lot of these things. The lifestyle you know, will be the thing that you're really going after and not really the, the passion, you know what I mean? Not, not It wasn't really the music, it was really just like being rich or acting like a rapper, not really the writing the songs and being in the studio. And those are the parts where like I go earlier and see, when I see Logic, I'm like, man, I see this is really, this is really your, when I look at Janae, I realize this is really like how you come to peace with things in your life. This is, with her, it's really what keeps her sane. You know what I mean? With Logic, it keeps him sane too, but with logic, it's just like you could tell like this is what he would be doing regardless. This is what he would, you know what I mean? And that 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 that's 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 not with everyone, but I think you have to you have to find. But it, it's because they he really loves spending time in the studio. If you really don't love he 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 I, honestly sometimes I feel like if logic wasn't an artist, he wouldn't be he'd be a producer. If he wasn't a producer, he'd be an engineer. He'd be a he'd be so he'd be some extra technical version of something. You know what I mean? If it wasn't being in front of this or expressing himself, you know so. I think it's so, so many people just want the surface elements of it. And I think you just have to keep, and that's cool. Like you can use that as the inspiration and keep stripping off the surface elements and being like, all right, I like this. Let me get deeper, get deeper. Oh shit, this shit got dirty. I don't want to, I don't want nothing to do with this career no more. Like, you know, and I think everyone gets to that. Everyone gets to an honest level with their own career where shit, at first I was flipping, I was making burgers and I, I got the number one burger stand in the world. And then you may get to a point where shit, man, I want to be vegan. I want to be vegetarian. I'm killing animals my you you know what i mean but it's just it's all the it's the journey it's really the journey and it's really what you're passionate about and it's really that can motivate you to do a whole that journey can motivate someone else to you know what i mean so it's i think it's 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 finding things that motivate you continuing to let that be the gas in the engine and trying to just you know go as long as you can but i think it's really important to keep i feel like it's more important to keep your passion sacred because the second you monetize them the less the the, the every the the more and more they become your livelihood. And uh, you'd be naive to just be like, yeah, I'm all, I'm all the way passionate about this and I'm all the way. Everyone in the NBA gets to a point where, like it's fun for a few years and it gets to a point where, oh man, do I go to this team for the money? Or do I go to this team for this? Or, oh man, Andre Iguodala, like, ah, oh, I'm about to, I'm injured. And, and you know, I, I kind of just got to get the, 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 the checks. Where else am I going to make this amount of millions? Of, you know what I mean? The, it, it's passion. It, it's, it, it's, it's all fun for about three, four years. Either. 25 to 30 but then it gets to a point where you got a kid and you got things to take care of and you got a whole life to live and then it's like 
you know. So um, um, I think I think being honest with yourself about the two and 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 keeping them keeping them sacred and and, and yeah, yeah. That's 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 if any advice to give, that's the advice I would give. So now that we've come towards the end of the show, mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you. If you could play one song off of your phone for us right now, which song would it be and why? One song. <laughs> why you put me on the spot like that? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, this was unannounced. <laughs> <laughs> but it's better when it's unannounced, no, I think. But, but the, the, what we're trying to say here is pretty much one song for the whole world to hear that your message would be that song. My yeah. Mess. yeah, see, that's 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 that's, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> that's exactly. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. Um, I don't. Oh man, man, like so many, so many, so many come to mind, and now I'm like, I don't want to do that one. And then I'm like, I don't want to say Kanye one. And then I'm like, I don't want to say. Now, nah, um, if I could really say a song that really, it would be like, uh, uh, uh like. It's crazy. It's I, I like honestly, I, cause I keep going back to it, and it's like the song that motivates me the most when like I go back to, it. and it's really cause I listen to it as a child the most. It's, it may be a little cliche, but it's like Pac, Hail Mary. Um, I think I listen to that in my solitude the most because I think like when you're like back against all odds, it's kind of something that motivates you a little bit. It kind of it's it's something that. I don't know. Like it, it, it's 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 something about that song that just that I think resonated me as a child and in a whole different way as an adult, and has continued to mean different things to me my whole life. And sometimes I may, sometimes I I've, I remember years where I've gone a whole year not listening to it, and then like I go back and then I listen to it nonstop. Like like so yeah. If I if I could pick one song, but like it's that's hard. I wish I I wish I was more prepared for that. I <laughs> that's a good that's a good enough answer yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well so thank you so much for being here today it actually means a lot for us and our listeners also i want to say a special thanks to you for having us in your office before coming here to learn more about what we're doing that also means yeah, a that lot was to actually us. a first um an executive like having mm -hmm. us in their office and trying to like actually, learn about what we're doing having some of his time to like learn about what we're doing so that means a lot to us so we just wanted to mention that too. Of course, man. Of course, I don't like, I don't like meeting people the first time in a, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I would, I would have hated to just come here and be like, hey, I've been fake. You know, it's nice having to have had a prior Definitely. meeting with you guys. And then, yeah, nah, man, you guys seem like cool people. So why not? Mm -hmm. And then a lot of these things are a little sideways, by the way. A lot of these requests to come to executives. So don't like feel bad when some of them don't respond, because even though you guys are UCLA, like a lot of them be like, they'll say like, oh, we're doing this at UCLA or. We, 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 we've done this at UC, like a lot of things. And they, it's like, at least me, I always want to meet the people to make sure that like y'all not taking advantage of disseminating the information or who has it. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, and when I met y'all, y'all was like real honest and real cool. I understood what it was. So it was like the most good thing. So really I appreciate, appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, me too. So. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So here's the end of Came a Long Way for this week. Make sure you tune in next Friday at 1 p.m.